Hi guys, welcome to another video by myself, Bateson87. This video is presented by the EA Game Changers Network. They were kind enough to fly me to LA, cover my hotel and uh, obviously uh, costs while I was over there. Fantastic trip in Los Angeles, it's always sunny out there. And we were given hands-on with FIFA 19. Now in today's video, we are going to be talking about, no, I said FIFA 19. I meant FIFA 20, guys. Uh, given hands-on with FIFA 20. That is the new game coming out in September, uh, which a lot of us, I presume a lot of you guys will be excited for as well. And in the hands-on, we're given 15 games. Well, I, I played about 15 to 20 games uh, of FIFA 20. It was only head-to-head. Uh, -head. It was not foot. It was not Volta, which was the new game mode. And it wasn't any other game mode. So I can't really talk about any other game modes because I don't know anything about them. Um, but what I can tell you is what was in front of me what was there, and uh, what we can get excited for as well. So it isn't FIFA 19, it's FIFA 20. New game, still jet lagged. Woo! For now there. So, what did we see as soon as we started FIFA 20? Well, I'm going to answer that question. When I loaded up FIFA 20, it was already loaded up. Um, it was like a, a demo, de like a demo where it had set teams. You could only play the Champions League final, so confirmation that the Champions League is still in FIFA 20, and there was teams you could play with. Now, Liverpool fans, there's no confirmation of this, but the six teams which you're able to play with were Borussia Dortmund, Manchester City, Real Madrid. There was a team of three at the back. I can't remember. Real Madrid, City. Dortmund. I'm trying to think who else played against me as well, but also Liverpool. Now, Liverpool usually are never uh, on FIFA, especially playable at the early stages. So um, it was interesting to see them there. It had the old kits, uh, which have obviously been rocked now, none of the new release kits. Um, so I, being a Liverpool fan, wanted to play. Oh, Spurs, were Spurs there? United? Juve? PSG was a team, yeah, I played with PSG and Juventus, were Juventus a team? I don't even know, because once I saw Liverpool, I was like, god damn it, I'm, I'm sticking with Liverpool. Um, and I'm glad I did, because I was able to test out some things in game with the players that I had, which were a part of the new um, features with, within the gameplay, and that we're going to talk about as well. So, um, apologies if I don't remember the whole teams, like I only played with a few of them. And uh, Liverpool was f by far the favourite, because obviously I'm a Liverpool fan. So... We went into the games, um, the, the menus were a little bit different, uh, as they would be, uh, as you would expect going into a new game, and we're getting into the, into the uh, gameplay now. So, we get into it, we press kick off, we kick the ball off, the ball moved, that's, that's always a positive when the ball moves, you know, you can get these games out there where you press X and the game doesn't move, but the ball moved, it was, it was absolutely fantastic, and um, instantly within the first 10 minutes of a game, you could see which way the game had gone compared to FIFA 19. Now, I've come back from LA. I've come back home. I've played some games of FIFA 19 uh, in foot as well. And the difference in the game speed was absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm going to say this. The game is pre-release. The game which I played out in LA was a very early version of FIFA 20. This could all change to the full release. We've seen it in the past, so I want to put that out there, guys. I'm not going to overhype anything. I'm not going to say that this game is going to be absolutely fantastic and a definite must-buy, um, but I am going to tell you what I played and whether you guys seem to, to like it or not, because this game will change all the way throughout the summer, all up until the full release. So that's what we're going to say now. Now, with the ball, you pass the ball around. You have got you have got a lot more time on the ball in FIFA 20 than you do in FIFA 19. FIFA 19 can feel like you're in a cluster, a cluster mess. You know, you run around. You run around and you can just get the ball really fast. You've got no time on the ball. But FIFA 20 felt like you had a lot of time on the ball. For the possession players out there, the players who like to think what they're doing on FIFA 19, um, pass the ball around, keep the possession, I think FIFA 20 will definitely suit you guys. Um, I enjoyed it. I had a blast with it. It took me a little bit to get used to, but after probably say five games, I started getting used to the way it worked. I did try the old meta stuff in 19 and tried it in 20. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And what else? Defending completely changed. Now, player switching. That's uh, something I've wanted to fight for for a few years now. I'm a manual player switcher. I like to manually do it myself. 
In previous FIFAs, I've been very limited in what I can do, but this one felt a lot more natural. The player switching, the player changing felt correct compared to pre previous years, and uh, I was just happy to see that. So that was one of the main positives that I enjoyed seeing. Um, then we move on to the... We're going to talk about the meta stuff, because that's what everyone wants to know. So... I ran down the wings. I tried LBY or LB uh, crossing to the back post. It did not feel strong. I don't think I scored one header in all of the games I played with numerous teams, with numerous uh, heighty strikers. But obviously, we're going to play the game. And who knows, it could be in there when it comes out uh, towards the back end of the year. We then tried El Tornado crossing. Didn't work. We then tried volley crossing. Didn't work either. And that's with the same setup as I would say I use in FIFA 19 anyway. So I, I tried it for a little bit. I, I was getting no success with it. And it was becoming a little bit of an issue. But what I did notice was the strongest thing that I felt with FIFA 20 was the fact that when you are controlling a player, you're dribbling and attacking the player. Like in one-on-one -on -one situations, you rewarded a lot more for doing them. So say you got, you've got a player, as an example, Mbappe. Mbappe is going up against one of the defenders. You could then use a way to beat him. You could do that via tricks. You could do that by just dribbling around him. But once you pass that defender, it felt like there was no coming back from the defender. Even though there's some new animations for the defenders where they can get back on track pretty quickly. Um, but it felt once you beat the defender, you're away. Um, like previous old FIFAs, I think, where you beat the defender... You would disappear, you weren't catching them. So you would ping the ball out to the left, you'd ping the ball out to the right over the top through ball. And when I was using the likes of Salah and Mane, them two were, were they were gone. They were absolutely gone. And it was it was nice to see because that's like if you're looking at real life football, when the ball's pinged out to Mane and, and Mohamed Salah, they they're just getting they're just getting uh, they're just opening it up, guys. And it's gonna be very difficult for, for people to catch them. You can still catch them, but it's gonna be very difficult. And the counter attacks felt very, very strong. But it didn't feel like he could get a counter-attack that often. It depended how um, the opponent played, whether he overloaded his attack and, and moved everyone up and left gaps at the back. It, it could be that. But the defence uh, feels a lot different. Um, you do get punished now uh, when you go to uh, when you go to attack uh, the uh, the attacking player. So if the defender, if you're controlling the defender, go to attack the player, boom, you're left with a... a um, a bit of a mistake, like it's a mistake which can be punished. Now, I know I pay played Corey in the first game. Um, I saw them with an LB fake shot, and you guys know the animation for that one. It's the same as 19. Um, it completely left the defender for gone, and I think I did it with Sadio Mane. Cut on the inside, nailed it in the bottom corner, uh, and it felt good. But that could change. Now, I offered my feedback back to EA, but I'll talk about that later on in the video as well. I'll just talk about what we, what we played, and we'll talk about the feedback that I give to the... Uh, Gameplay team um, at the end and the gameplay feedback which, which was given because there was a few things which I didn't like still. One of them being, and you guys will have seen, uh, it was mentioned at the uh, at the conference, I think, which was the chaining of skill moves. A lot of people were worried about this one. Chaining of skill moves. Now, in FIFA 19, you guys know you can spam the La Croquettes, you can spam quick skill moves one after the other. Uh, Elastico, I think, is one of them, which is dumb. And I was trying out with the lack of care, and it didn't feel that much different. It did feel slowed down, but it still felt strong. It still felt like I'd do quite a lot of them uh, in a row. I think maybe two or three in a row, and each one you did, it then uh, created a little bit more error. So the ball would be a little bit heavier, the player would be heavier, uh, and potentially could lose the ball. But it still felt strong. I think it still needs toning down a little bit. As to the coming of the uh, chaining of the other skill moves. Um, they still felt normal. I'd still be able to do to them pretty well. So I think the skillers out there which were worried about it, I don't think there's too much to worry about it. I think that one should be all right unless they completely um, overhaul it. Timed finishing. It feels a lot, little bit more harder. If you guys are going to be the type of person to be able to nail the uh, the time shots in in within the window i think the window has been shortened now um then it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how you do with that um i didn't find that much success with with uh, with timed uh, finesse shots as we did at the start of fifa 19 that felt all right and goalkeeper movement Another one which a lot of people are talking about because this one's been confirmed coming back in goalkeeper movement just feels the same uh, if you move the keeper this time, unless you're going to be very lucky, it does feel like you're going to get beaten. So it's maybe something which people don't go near come FIFA 20. Um, but like I said, everything I'm talking about now could potentially change uh, towards the start of the game. So we talked about time finishing, um, which is still there. What else? Uh, anything else you guys want to cover in there? Or are we good? 
I think we're good. I think we're, I think we're golden for now. Unless there's anything else you want to ask me about. Defending was good though. Like I know I need to like the way I defend in FIFA 19. I've got to completely rework my defending from FIFA 20. Uh, driven shots felt all right. I didn't really do that many to be fair. Uh, tactics felt the same as well. I think when I was speaking to EA, they told me that tactics are changing uh, in terms of they are working on something where you're going to be able to have a play around and change who's at the front post on set pieces and stuff. Um, AI defending didn't feel as strong, even though there was a few instances where the blocks the uh, the uh, the the defenders were making was pretty strong. Um, but I couldn't see. Uh, well, I couldn't remember whether it was my being controlled by human or, or AI, but it doesn't feel as uh, as strong uh, as it did in in FIFA 19. Headers and crossing. It didn't feel that good unless the player was open. So if we're crossing it to the back post and someone was free, then obviously you got a little bit of chance to do that. Um, but when you're contesting headers and, and trying to jump over people, the new animations which have added into the defenders, I think are going to overcome a lot of the issues which we had in FIFA 19, where the uh, the smaller player would outjump the taller defender because the defender was just stuck still, you know, he wouldn't do anything, and the player would just jump over his head. But that feels like that's gone. Um, 180 shots and passes. So now... If you guys want to take and do the 180 passes and, and, and get rid of the ball, like trying to pass it out defence, you're going to run into a lot of errors. Um, this, uh, if you make a blind pass, the ball more than likely will go nowhere near where you want it to go and uh, obviously allow the uh, opponent to pick up the ball, which is how it should be anyway. You shouldn't be able to do the 180 blind passing and uh, ping the ball up left and right. I'm a person who does pass out of defence in FIFA 19, but I know in FIFA 20, I am going to have to start crossing the ball out just as you would uh, expect. Um, anyone to do, you know, um, boom, boom, passing consistency, it, that was all right, yeah, passing consistency was pretty good, no issues with that one, constant pressure nerf, that, Alexander, that wasn't really tested, dude, um, and, uh, kickoffs, didn't notice anything, didn't notice anything with kickoffs, now, you guys know, in FIFA 19, I like to make the game look pretty good, I like to flick the ball up, now, with the flick up of the ball, and I don't mean the one where you stand still, flick it up. I mean the one where you receive the ball and flick it up. There's a lot more error on that flick up. But I was able to string my, like not trademarked, but my technique of scoring goals, which was the La Croquette, which would ping the ball up in the air and then flick the ball back and then volley. I had a lot of success with the flick up system again and volleying it into the bottom top anywhere you want to go i had a lot of success with that which i was a little bit concerned for and i did pass that on as the feedback to the team as well i was like this is still very strong um and uh videos were taken of the goals i was scoring as well and sent over to um the gameplay team in in vancouver so ho hopefully they do look at that because you guys know if you've watched me stream um if you watch me do videos and stuff you'll notice that i do like the flick up system quite a lot so i am hoping that it does get nerfed down a little bit so you guys have got to work towards scoring um there's still plenty of time there's still plenty of time before the new game comes out so uh we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see uh first time shots felt all right didn't feel as strong as I do with, uh, with with this game. Even though I did see, I think it was Bruce Granick or Tony MC. They did hit a decent first time shot from distance, which just sank in the top corner. But that was a one off instance. You guys are talking about skill moves as well. I don't know who created that rumor about skill moves changing, but it's not. It's the same. It's the skill moves are exactly the same. There is new skill moves as well, which I didn't look into. But um, the, the 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 way you do skills and stuff like that is nothing. There's nothing different. Um, to, to that one. Somebody from EA... No, they never acknowledged. They never. Someone made it up and then EA addressed it and said it's not changed. I think there is a way to do different skills, but the main skill system isn't uh, any difference. Um, oh, I mean... Yeah, so Volta's completely different, guys. I can't talk about Volta because I've not played it. All I've seen is uh, what people were talking about. So we know penalty kicks can be pretty... Uh, Pretty messy uh, in, in FIFA 19 and a few f previous FIFAs as well. We'll talk about penalties first. So penalties. You're running. You're moving your head left, right and centre. You're bobbing your head. You don't like you're at a disco before you run up and take the penalty. And a lot of people use that to like be able to see which way the ball was going to go, which way the shooter may have gone. And you can use that to deceive the player. Like, look like you're going left, but then shoot right. Um, and now it's completely different. So what you've got is a rectile. Um, 
the rectangle is like a little circle. It, it goes like all over the screen. I think there'll be a video on the screen now where you can see it. Uh, you can move it around. If you go too far, the ball goes out. Um, uh, and if you keep it down the middle, so it's going to shoot middle. Now, with the penalty, you can also choose to hit it. So, so what you do is you uh, hit the rectangle. You choose the power and where you're going. And then you can leave it if you want. But there's also going to be a lot of error with that penalty because it's like a wide circle and uh, the opponent could potentially get to it. You can just turn it off as well like you can do with the uh, with the arrow in 19. Um, and what you do is you run up, it locks in, the player's head does not move, um, the player positioning does not move as well. So it's once it's locked in, it's locked in. Now, just before the uh, player goes to kick the ball, you can press shoot again, which will turn it into a timed penalty. Which can be, <laughs> which can be problematic, because if you guys know about time shooting, if you don't get it green, where's it going? Flying over. If you hit it orange, it could potentially be flying over or nowhere near that circle. So, it's not as strong as you guys are seeing. I'm seeing people in the chat like time penalty is lol. It's not going to be as as strong as you guys are thinking, because I even I was hitting some decent ones, and they weren't as good as I, I would expect. Uh, goalkeeper movement, very the same on penalties as well. Move left, room, right, dive. New animations as well. Uh, majority of the penalties which were taken during my testing, though, were ones shot down the middle because everyone was getting used to the new penalty system. So that's something to keep in mind that it wasn't properly tested um, and it probably won't get properly tested until like the full game release. And that's, that's the same with a lot of things that were mentioned in the video. Free kicks. Now, there was a video EA put out from the live stream, which I think will be in this video as well, where the reptile was above and away the uh, the um, the top corner. I think it was Ericsson hitting the free kick. It was away and over the bar, and you're like, what the hell's going on? So with this, apparently, and I didn't test it, apparently you can actually power up the free kick with the analog sticks. You can drag it back. And then power it up that way. And also you can with the analog stick, you can also change the type of free kick as well. Uh, from backspin, front spin, um, knuckle balls, and types of free kicks like that. And, and it's the same as penalties as well. If you hit it just as they hit, it'll be a timed uh, a time free kick. And I think Zoe actually hit a very nice knuckle ball free kick against me. That's basically what I played, guys. Skilled moves felt alright. Free kicks felt alright. Scary. New things to learn, I suppose, but it's the same every game. You'd expect to, to, to learn new stuff. And you've got to remember, guys, the, the games we played were not tested on servers. They were played uh, locally. So, like, Zwei was playing against me on the same console. So we got nothing to look at with that. Um, I'm going to run into the questions with you guys, which you lot have asked, and see if you've covered them. Uh, questions, right. Um, can we switch to the right players? I believe you can, ready now. Goalkeeper movement, messy. And I think you'll be punished uh, if you don't use it correctly now. Even though you're punished like at the moment now anyway. Gameplay faster or slower. It does feel a lot slower. And the AI defending doesn't feel as strong. It does feel like you get punished in defending if you're not controlling the right person. RL Tornado's and meta skills still is overpowered. I will not say they are. Even though to set even though to set myself up for a shot when I did the L Tornado flick up and then flicked it back over the head and volleyed it. That did feel strong, but that'd be in the feedback. Um, green time shots harder to do. Uh, they are, yeah. The windows a lot shorter now, and even could change even further up to release. Um, what is the most efficient playstyle? Slow build up through balls, counter attack. I'd probably say if slow build up and working the ball around the field uh, and trying to pull defenders out and leave massive gaps on the wings. That's something I was finding out. Um, free kicks penalties change. Yeah, we've covered that one. Uh, free kicks a bit easier to do. I don't know. I'll have to get practicing them to see what they are. But I I love the old free kick system. And this one's going to be a massive change for me. Long shots OP. Didn't really see that many long shots, to be fair. And I think that could be down to the fact that people in 19 got burned with long shots. They didn't really do them. Mm. Yeah. No, I didn't really see many, many long shots. Heady goals and crosses still overpowered. I'm going to say no with that one. Even though that could change with different personnel and types of players that we use in different game modes. Defending in better and goalkeeper movement. Defending felt a lot better, yeah. But it also felt like you're going to be punished. Risk and reward. So when you go one-on-one -on -one with the defender, if you beat them, you've opened up a lot of space. Uh, can slower defenders catch up with super fast attackers? Dan, that does not feel like it's going to be the case. Once Mbappe is past the defender, there's no catching him. So who knows, it could 
be how it is in FIFA, uh, FIFA, FIFA 13, FIFA 14, but hopefully not as bad. Also, for you guys who do not like the referee getting involved with the player, the ball hitting the referee, I'm only answering that because I saw someone's question. The referee, the ball now goes through the referee. He is not an active person. He cannot hit the ball. The ball cannot bounce off him. The referee is now something who's not going to get in the way and the ball goes through them. So it's going to look weird in game. As you would expect when the ball goes through something, it, it's, it can be a mess. But I do believe it's something which you guys wanted, uh, which was the fact that that refs were uh, that refs were a big complaint, even though it does take away a little bit from the realism in the game. You guys wanted it, but it's there. I personally wasn't that bothered with it, but I can also see why people were. But it was confirmed that the ball goes through the referee now. So just a heads up with uh, with that one. Um, has one of ones on goalkeeper resulting in more goals than before. Yes, yes. When you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, it's a lot more easier to score. And so it should be. So it should be um, with that one. How good do I rate the gameplay out of 10? I'm probably not going to give it a rating out of 10 because I didn't f properly test it in 15 to 20 games. So uh, with that one, I don't want to give a, a rating. But it, it did feel good. It did feel different. Um, and I think people will, Bennett will probably prefer the FIFA 20 gameplay uh, compared to the FIFA 19. But... When the new FIFA comes out, the new FIFA 20 comes out, people are going to find new stuff to, to abuse. Uh, and unfortunately, you can't find now in, in 15 games, you know. Um, so that's something you need to remember when it comes to uh, to me playing it. Um, did they have more custom tactics? I believe there's a few things, but I didn't probably take a look at them. Um, new formations. I didn't see that one either. Running into the referee. I didn't see that, Dan. The referee kept away from me. I only saw it once when the ball went through the keeper. Um... And that's basically all the questions covered. So, with that, I put, if I've not answered some of your questions, guys, in, in here, I'll continue it throughout the day anyway on, on the stream. Uh, I'm going to talk about the feedback which I offered EA with the uh, games that I played. I did mention the La Croquetta stringing, being able to string the La Croquettas. It did feel different compared to FIFA 19, but it still fe felt very strong. And I said... I did say, um, I did say to them, I wasn't I, like it doesn't feel that different, and people are still going to abuse it. But it was mainly the lack of care which people were having issues with uh, to defend against, and it, that was a skill move which I didn't really rate. It was too easy to do. It is too easy to do, and for you to be able to, be able to do it. It didn't feel that good and there wasn't that much error. So hopefully what EA should do is add extra error onto the second lack of care. Like do it once, fair enough. Once you do the second one, it should put more error on. Error on the uh, the skill move. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see with that. I also mentioned the flick up system and the way that I was able to shoot uh, and volley shot. And you guys know I want to do the lack of care, flick the ball up, like flip back, for, uh, back, flick the ball back and then forth. You guys know you don't really have to time the shots. You can literally just hit it. And I was able to hit them still and hit them into the bottom corner, top corner, wherever it went. And there was a few videos taken. So that was some of the feedback I offered uh, with that one. And there was something else which I mentioned as well, uh, which was, I can't remember now. It's been like five days. But it was, there was three main subjects that I, uh, I mentioned, which was a lack of care string in. The keeper, the keeper, no, not keeper, sorry. The key, like, it was something to do with the keepers when 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 shooting, but I can't remember specifically what it was. Um, but it was it was all right for the for the fifteen games that I played. The game felt all right, but then again, I played it last year, and it completely changes so often. So that's something to keep in your back in mind, guys. The ball, the, the the ball, the game does change quite a lot from now up until the end. But I mean, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But I enjoy any FIFA, you know, I enjoy FIFA because it's a football game, um, but it looked a lot better. I did like the fact that you were able to control the ball, have more time on the ball and try and think what you're doing rather than just guessing and pinging the ball out left and right and it would still work. Now you're actually going to have to think about the game and I think uh, a lot of you guys will see that as a, as a, as a benefit. So that's basically it covered, guys. Hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully you guys understood it. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to it like I am as well. But there's obviously there's some things which need tuning. Um, and hopefully they do do that in time. Hopefully I get to test it again. That would be nice as well. Um, but it looked good. It did look good. Now I just want to play it. But, um, so there we are guys.
a little brief rundown of what I played at EA Play. Massive thank you to the EA Game Changers Network for inviting me along and getting me involved. And hopefully it continues in the future. Leave a like rating. Subscribe. Bye-bye.